So as we find ourselves here at the beginning of a new year, well, we're about a month into the new year. I want to bring you Linalo's words from a dictation that was published in 2006. And beloved Linalo says, and now, O souls of sacred fire, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. O magnify the Lord by the magnification principle of the great geometry of thy being. O sacred fire, within the sealed heart, within the sealed chamber of the heart, I penetrate. I come, I celebrate the birthday of the king within you, and I urge you to a greater acceleration. And I urge you indeed to the contemplation of another 12 months. If perhaps you have neglected the, neglected the salutation of the Lord Christ, now God gives to you again another year, 12 cycles of the 12 stars of the Virgin Mother, yours to pluck as you would pluck the stars of Venus and clutch it to your heart as a daffodil of the skies and as the place where brother and sister of love dwell in paradise. The one that you have lost on Mu and to be regained again in Malibu. Oh, how I love the fire of the rock of Christ within you. Oh, how I love you when you live to bear the truth without fear and without reproof from God or man. Oh, how I love you when I see that you understand the word of truth, that only truth can ever be clad with immortality is the lesson of my life that the blessed savior taught me. We heard last week in the teaching from Archangel Michael and again and again, and the masters have reminded us and continue to remind us that truth is a vital focus for all of us. Beloved Linalo continues and he says, and so you see the honor of the spoken word in truth is all the honor that is thy own. And it is a sacred word that will atone for error. And it will be the comfort of the cross once and twice denied. It is the comfort of that cross inside, O blessed son of God, O blessed daughter of God. I am Lanalo, I am come, the ever present guru of the one, the soul who yearns to live, to be, and to see me as I am. Lo, I am within your midst. And beloved Lanalo, we welcome you always, every moment of every day. And Lanalo says, I am a flaming flame of the Holy Spirit. I would quicken you, O blessed soul of the light. Now tether heart flame unto a glorious flight, for I take you by the hand. I take you by the hand now to accelerate up, up, up the crystal cord, not a center up the chimney, but I come, O blessed one, to show you that you too have a way that you might pass right unto the center of the one, your own beloved I am presence of the sun. Where can you go? Beloved Lenalo asks, where can you go except unto the highest mountain of your being, unto the summit, higher and higher then, accelerate and know thy God as thou art, the blessed one, the chila of the light. And then Lanala says, I come to push you higher, to give you that God determination for which you call. And let the call to me, Lanalo, be excelsior. For I am in that banner of Lord Maitreya and of the world mother. And I am in the lotus of the Buddha and look upon that Lord of the world. For I am the chila of the Buddha. I am the Buddha of the world. I am the Buddha of the light. I am the Buddha of the night. I stand in spirit and in matter. I am the oscillation of the light and never the vacillation. And I want to interject a reminder here that oscillation in physics means regular variation in magnitude or position around a central point. Beloved Linalo says to us, I am the oscillation of the light. And in vacillation is that inability to decide between different opinions or actions. The inability to decide between different actions or opinions. It's an indecision. And our prayer for ourselves is that we are never found to be 
indecisive about the actions that we need to take. And Lenalo continues, he says, and therefore in imitation of my path, see that you do not vacillate, but understand that alpha to omega, light ascending, light descending, light ascending, light descending in you is ever the coming and the going of the soul who will not be static or in the status quo, but who will rise higher and higher and then return as the dove that takes flight unto the morning, unto the sun. The snowy white dove of the Holy Spirit will come and you will not will be not set in the rigor mortis of death, but rather in the light of immortality as you move in the rhythm of Shiva. And Lanalo calls Shiva, 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 Shiva. And as I cut it, utter the cry of Shiva, I direct my voice unto the heart of humanity, unto the heart of the chinas in the earth and unto the heart of the ascended masters. And lo, by the direction of my cry, I send the call unto the mighty threefold flame. I send the call to love and love does answer. So I call that light for I know that that light will set aright right each flaw that would penetrate as tiny splinter within the heart that would be pure. Oh, blessed heart, would you be pure? Perhaps you do not know the flaw within the jewel that Saint Germain by miracle upon miracle will remove even as he did as the wonder man of Europe to those ungrateful ones who still to this hour have not taken the hint or the wink of the Knight Commander Saint Germain. And as I read these words of Lanella while I was preparing for today, I stopped and, and I gave thought to how often am I finding myself potentially in that same position of being ungrateful. And it could be as simple as not expressing gratitude for what we have and everything that we receive. So how often do I not need, heed the call or not listen when the master's call or answer my call? Beloved Lenalo continues and he says, and therefore they are yet on the brink of their own self-destruction, having never entered by the door of the purple fiery heart. They stood awed by phenomena and yet never ever considering the grand phenomena of the mighty ascension path of the individual soul, one at last with a goal that is worthy of the soul of life. And so here you are. You have been the twinkling in the eye of the mother. You have been that ancient light of Emon, who was Ray of Swaran, and he did bring a light from distant worlds, a light of energy and evolutions beyond your own. I speak of ascended masters and their chinas who bow unto the will of God and who will not defy that God or that law, but stand in humble humility of the life waves and evolutions of systems of world, of the orderly progression of their path of karma. Remember this, O oh beloved ones, if you could look into the spaceships that move beyond the galaxies, you would see the supermen who exist outside of God, who have manipulated every creative force and light and then who wield energies of physical matter. Beloved ones, we say very simply, so what? What is the state of the soul? What is the state of the evolution? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, all of that passes as a fly into the flame. The one thing needed is charity in humility, in obedience unto the Lord Christ. And if you have charity, that is a gift without price. That charity opens the door to preparedness and carefulness and sensitivity to every part of life. I have set my seal upon your path of initiation. You see, you are protected by that mighty sphere and another sphere, the figure eight of our twin flames. And in the dictation here, beloved Lanello was talking about himself and our beloved Guruma. 
And then Linella continues and he says, now Archangel Uziel does appear to that very special initiation of the alchemical union. And so beloved ones, take an opportunity that does not come often in the cycles of galaxies to go beyond all of the manifestations of the powers of this world and of a wisdom of God misused within this world and the love that has known not the reality of that perfect love. Beloved ones, I speak of the great perversions of the threefold flame among those who have seized power in this and other systems. Blessed one, be not dismayed, be not disturbed, for they know it not, but their course is one that is the filling, the filing of the drone ends in single file as they themselves, without Shiva's dance, go into the court of the sacred fire. They know not where they go. They look neither to the right nor the left, nor up into his face. They see only the ant that is ahead, and therefore they follow a mechanization, a manipulation while thinking that they have omnipotence. They have naught but a temporary use of light that is come, that is become an abuse of light. Let them go on their way. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. I am one footstep ahead in the game of hopscotch. I am one jump, a cosmic jump, a leap into the arms of God. Are you practicing each day for the final game and the final leap? Well, beloved ones, you need not consider the final leap for each and every day has its reach that must exceed its grasp. Now, before I go into the teachings by Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, and by Shiva as well, I would like to share a small excerpt from a witness that was published in the Pearls of Wisdom. And it happened to be the same pearl volume and number that is one of the dictations that I'm taking a teaching from this morning by beloved Shiva. And this witness, I'm just taking the last paragraph from that witness that was published. But I thought it was so apropos to where we are today, and it's very important information for each and every one of us. So I'm going to read just that last paragraph for all of us to take in. So I am writing this not only to tell you of my experience and victory over endometriosis, but to witness to mother's role in our lives as intercessor and helper. I believe that all our happiness is truly based on the will of God, and that sometimes when we are not happy, we need to realize that it is ultimately of our own doing and that an out of alignment condition not being centered in God's will is what causes it. So now we're gonna go in and we're going to listen to the words of beloved Brahma Vishnu Shiva. This was a dictation published in September 8, 1991. And the triune one comes forward and says, I am Brahma. I am Vishnu, I am Shiva. Lo, I am thy God in manifestation, the triune one, the triune one. I speak to you for my son whom I have sent has spoken. And this dictation was delivered right after a dictation that was given to us by beloved Jesus. Therefore, as his presence is yet upon the messenger, I come for there, through his mediatorship, I commune with my own. Thou canst not commune directly in the sense of establishing at one moment with me, except through the sacred heart of the Son whom I have sent. And that Christ of Jesus, the same Christ who is the Christ of you, whom you shall one day fulfill, is the only begotten Son of God. This is the universal Christ whom I have sent, whom I have individualized. And there is but one Lord and one Savior who is personified for each one of you. For I have so loved the world that I have sent my only begotten Son to be the mediator in your life. Thus, Jesus Christ, I have called, I have sent from the beginning unto the ending. Therefore, receive him as the tester of thy soul. He does hold the office for this evolution of the only begotten Son. And the one who does hold that office becomes, therefore, 
the representative to you not only of that universal Christ, but of your own holy Christ self, to whom you are not yet bonded. Thus you have been washed and you are clean, but not all and not altogether. And you are reaching for that oneness. The fire shall try you, even the fire of the sun. And unto the incarnation of the word thou must pass through many veils of the garment of God to enter in. Thus, inasmuch as the most important requirement of the hour for you, my children, is to enter into that bonding, heart upon heart, through Jesus your Lord, I am come to give impetus to that process and to make known to you that the love and the sweet love of the Son must be reflected in the mirror of your soul as you love in kind with sweetness and adoration and childlike simplicity. Blessed be the mediator of the word unto thy coming. Blessed is he that does receive him and she that does wear his bridal garment. The garment of the Lord, the garment of the Lord, the garment of the Lord. May you seek it in all of your goings and comings, in all of your doings. Now may you become the devotee of myself as Brahma, myself as Vishnu, myself as Shiva. Or you may become the devotee of the Divine Mother, my consort and numerous manifestations. Make your peace with the Divine Mother and you will know her son and love him and obey him and be wed to him. Make your peace with the Divine Mother. There shall not be then, there can't not be any barrier twixt thyself and I am that I am. O violet flame, saturate. O Shiva, consume. O Vishnu, illumine. O Brahma, let thy law be engraven again and again, re-infired in the inward parts. Thus I am that I am, and the personifications of myself you will find in these three and in your mighty I am presence. You indeed, I am indeed God of very gods. Yet because thou hast rejected love from above, that love does come unto you as hardship, as karma, as the play, the lila of the mother, as the maya that you must pass through until you are literally exhausted, scratched and scarred, bowed down from passing through the astral marshes. Yes, beloved, I shall woo you through the dark hours in an attempt to wean you from the glamour of darkness. And it is a glamour, beloved, of the flesh and of the astral body. Seek not the vanity of this world, but seek to offer thy soul as the acceptable offering. The beauty of the soul transcends this world, and the ascended masters veil their beauty from the eyes of mortals who would lust after them rather than receive them and become like them. Mortality by nature lusts after the light it cannot have and it will not work toward. This mortal cannot attain immortality except it put off mortality and put on immortality. Your soul is not mortal except she be reft of the bridegroom. In that sense of the word, the soul can be lost. Thus I come, see how near is God to you. See how personable, approachable. Wonderful is the presence, awesome the power, immense the immensity. So very near is he, thy whispering heart, thy quivering heartbeat, as the tiny bird of self does tremble like a hummingbird suspended in the presence of his God. He is as near as the offering of God, yes, yet thou cannot catch the hummingbird. Even so, you cannot catch your God, but I, as the hound of heaven, will catch thee one way or the other. I am here. I await thy call. Call to me. Call to me as thy call does echo even in the canyons of Hades. Call to me and I will answer. I have the capacity to reach you anywhere, but I cannot reach you if you will not make the call and desire, as the desiring of all of the fire of thy being being unfurled and rewound again as tight coil, as all of thyself does enter the coil, as enter the call. 
In our bulletin, I have included for us the prayer of the penitent heart, as it was given to us in this dictation by Brahma Vishnu Shiva. And I invite you now to read the two parts of the prayer that was given to us together. So in your bulletin, you'll find the prayer of the penitent heart. And the first part is our call to God. Oh my God, help me. Together. Oh my God, help me, deliver me, I am in trouble. I am in the trouble of my own making and choosing and the folly of my pride and rebellion has gone before me to dash all of the beauty and hope of my life. Oh my God, I surrender to thy law and will. No longer shall I challenge thy universe, thy kingdom, thy God government of hierarchies of angels who have never fallen from grace. Yes, my God, I see all around me the fruits of evil. I want none of it. I have descended to the bottom of the abyss and I am through with all of it and all of the cackling and the howling and the hooting of these depraved ones. I wish to be made whole and I am willing to walk every step of the way up the abyss. If it take a thousand years to climb out of the pit of oblivion, I now take the first step and I am coming home. I am coming to thee, my God. And if perchance thou should send to me thy mighty angel, I shall rejoice. But I shall show that step by step I will climb. I will accept the conditions of the path of initiation according to my karma. I will not ask to be made an exception to thy law, O my God. I will fulfill all things, harvest my own wrong sowings, sow again good sowings in their place, reap fruit, distribute the fruit from my tree of life that all might eat of it. And know I am being made holy day by day. Thou hast given to me, O oh my God, the path unto transformation. I am transformed. I am transfiguring and being transfigured by thee day by day. I will climb the ropes. I will come to thee, O oh my God. Whilst thou receive me to thyself once again. This is thy prayer, beloved, and thy God answer. The Triune One gives us the answer, so open your heart and hear. And then I invite you again to give these words with me. So God answers to the soul's call for deliverance. I shall receive thee together. Yes, I shall receive thee. I shall receive thee in good time according to the cycles of my law and thy fulfillment thereof. Thus I will give you a path, and if you will endure unto the end of thy human creation and thy human karma, yes, I shall receive thee again. And in the interim in the twilight zone, there I have sent my son. Receive him. If in all humility to the deepest core of thy being thou shalt bend the knee and confess this Christ as thy Lord, I shall receive thee. Wert thou a fallen angel, an arch deceiver, or a former enemy of Christ? If thou shalt embrace my son whom I have sent, I shall give thee to drink that thou shalt not thirst again. And then beloved Brahma Vishnu Shiva says, this is my response to each and every soul who desires true salvation. Know that I am that I am and that I have outlined the way, the truth and the life through my son, Christ Jesus, the Christ who is Jesus. Therefore, take these teachings restored by his messengers and mine. Take the path and sip it. It is a strong meat of the word. Sip it daily and feel the glow of a holy teaching suffusing the heart, expanding, increasing the law of being. Yes, to those who have strayed from the hierarchies of angels or descended from the first estate of their Christhood, I offer the open door. The conditions must be met. The prayer of the penitent heart and the call must be given. If this be not forthcoming and an individual make the free will decision to slink into the blackness, declaring the self unworthy, I say to that one, to so declare the self as unworthy is to take my name in vain, for I am worthy. I am thy worthiness unto the Lord. I am worthy.
To deny self-worth, even if thou be a hardened sinner, is to deny me. He that denieth me has already self-denied himself and placed himself outside of my reach. Free will is the law of all octaves. Therefore, the individual who does so affirm does actually affirm this in defiance of me, in rebellion and anger against me. Affirming the not-self as a lesser god, that one does truly sever the tie to me. There is no greater self-denier that leads to annihilation than the affirmation of the absence of self-worth. Nothing and no one is beyond hope, beloved. But the one who desires to be saved must ask to be saved. Do you understand how many get beyond the point of desiring or asking and therefore are beyond the pale of the reach of those of the higher octaves who may descend no, layer, no lower than the etheric plane? Do you understand this, beloved? And I'm going to interject here and I'm hoping that everyone can in a united voice say, yes, we understand, beloved Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. And he continues, our beloved God says, I am your God. I have come to speak to you. I have descended not through an ascended master or an archangel or a cosmic being. I have come to speak to you as my sons and daughters that you might know how much I have loved thee and how much I am truly a part of you. <laughs> For you are my issue and my essence and my seed. I send forth my life stream. It does become your life stream. I am the light flowing over your crystal cord. I am the light that feeds the unfit flame. I am the river of life. I am thy allness. I am thyself. I am worthy to be thy God. Thou art worthy to be my beloved son. Rise then to the dimensions of your holy Christ self and choose to live forevermore. And we answer to you, beloved Father, Mother God, yes, we choose to live forevermore. And then we go to a dictation by beloved Lord Shiva and we listen to beloved Shiva's words. He says, I am Shiva, I am come as the destroyer of all that is unlike love. So you have placed yourself at my feet. So I come and I come to consume the cause and core of your unreality, your indulgence in the unreal when love is knocking at the very door. I am Shiva in the flame in that white fire. Now I say, jump with me, jump into the flame, jump into the center of the white light and dare to be consumed. Oh, beloved ones, do you understand the meaning of jumping into the fire and not knowing if you will jump out again? This is the trial of Shiva. It is a sacred fire. You will not come out the same. I come then with the initiation of love. And this cycle will be for the repealing of those self-imposed laws whereby you have determined to retain the flaws and leave the diamonds in the way. O oh, beloved ones, do you not understand the great gorgeous quality of perpetual love that is a life of eternal youth? You do not have to go through the aging process. You do not need to be weighed down with the effluvia of this planet. Listen then to Shiva, for I come not only with the mystery of love, but with the mystery of eternal youth. And I am here to transfer it to you in the innermost core of being, so that you will understand that life is joyous and life is free. Free for the asking, free for the saturation of your very pores, your eyes, your ears, your sensitivities, your soul awareness. Beloved ones, be in bondage no more. You have but to call, to speak my name, to exercise that name, not exorcise it. Repeat it often. Speak it to the wind and to the sky. Speak it unto the subway and to the trains that pass you by. Shout it into the waves of the sea. Speak it in the night and in the day. It is a fiat of light. 
I give it to you as a dynamic decree. Let the momentum of the wind and the breath of the Holy Spirit be that joy within you. And then beloved Shiva says, let the Lord be praised east and west. Let the Lord be praised east and west. Let the Lord be praised east and west. Precious ones of light, I would like to know where I am. I would like you to know where I am stumping. In the darkest places, places that you would consider to be not where very nice people ought to go. Beloved ones, I stump where the fallen ones attempt to throw the darkness and throw the dice in the gambling casinos, in the places where the plans of war are made, in the places where the plots against the light are forged. Beloved ones, I desire your understanding that when you cry out and give my name in the face of every adversity, there is an effect of a shattering of the energy of the fallen ones as the shattering of a matrix and of a force field and therefore a crumbling of all that is unreal. That is the carrying light of the love of Shiva. And therefore those who dare to speak my name and give the cry of the initiation of love will be the first to receive the waterfall full of light, cool and sweet, that bursts into a living flame, so gentle as to make you wonder what all of that fire and blunder about Lord Shiva was. Well, beloved ones, for the sons and daughters of God, a most tender and gentle, fiery rod, and yet the results are always the same. The new name, the seamless garment, the acceleration, the vision. I caution you well, when you would come under the divine spell of Shiva, be prepared to receive an energy that will challenge the very darkest darkness of the earth. Bletters ones, I can hardly wait to see you try. I can hardly wait to see them cry. You have been crying too long. You have allowed weeping entities and self-pity and the sense of aloneness and all sorts of conditions to trample upon the temple of being. This is a fiery coil. This is the highest emanation of chilas on the planetary body. And believe me, beloved ones, I do not say it lightly. I say it full of light of cosmic awareness. Precious hearts, I ask you to pray for all souls of light, where they may be in psychic groups or with those who are taking them on a meandering path that could take a thousand years to arrive even to a place where you have arised in a single weekend in this white fire core of the ascended masters. Blessed ones, there are enough light bearers upon this earth to save the earth in this very moment. But they have been socketed and pocketed into various corners and various gurus, and they fear then to leave those situations and they do not come out therefore and seek the higher light. Let them be cut free by the sword of Archangel Michael. Let the Elohim come forth. I stand in the energy of the Holy Spirit and I bow before the Lord God and the Universal One. And I implore all of life and the Lords of Karma now to send forth the full gathered momentum of Shiva into the midst of the people of light. Let them be stripped of all illusion, confusion and self-awareness outside of God. Let the false hierarchies be a bound let the imposters of twin flames and of the holy spirit be bound let every son and daughter of god walk free and determined into the very flame of life this then is the moment for action let us not turn back to the ways of density and ignorance and slowness and the constant consideration and going over and over again through the human consciousness as though it were something of worth something that could possibly be the instrument of eternal life or of reason or of the logos or of finding God. And then beloved Shiva gives us an instruction. Beloved ones, give yourself a cycle to rise to a plane of greater dominion. Make a God determination. Think now of a very certain condition within your consciousness, which you absolutely must go which you absolutely know must go. Think of that human consciousness. Think of that problem or habit that has gnawed at you and kept you from your eternal salvation. 
Now, beloved ones, I ask you, be a scientist of the new age and try this one experiment for the next 48 hours. Each time you face that momentum, that memory, that consciousness, that habit or that desire, whatever it is that you long to see put into the flame, each time it crosses the line of the mind, the desire body, or your big toe, each time it comes into memory, speak into it with the full veracity of your voice, Shiva. And I invite you to give this call with me, this fiat, four times. Shiva, 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 Shiva. We call that into every condition that we want to transmute. And then beloved Shiva continues and he says, why beloved ones, it will even frighten the elementals about you. It will frighten even the demons that have invaded your body temple. Why even your very cells and consciousness will feel the light of Shiva and they will surrender on contact. That fear that comes in the face of the one who is able to declare, you have no power, you are not real, you do not have any opportunity anymore to stand within this temple. Beloved ones, some of you use so much energy and so much momentum of the ascended martyrs in so many decrees when you could, but speak the word and be done with those fallen ones. And then let those decrees count for constructive projects of light, for invoking supply and the healing of nations. Beloved ones, the touch of Shiva is always the judgment. There is no other way that Shiva can come into your life. Beloved ones, when you go before the world and they ask you, he, who is your guru? You can say, Shiva, Shiva, Shiva. So, beloved ones, shout it to your twin flame. For I guarantee by the cloven tongues of fire within me this night that when you speak my name, I hurl from your heart that flame of love that will reach the heart of your twin flame. This is the secret of the contact, and this is the secret of the purging of your temple, so that the gifts of Shiva, as the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and more than those that are listed in your Christian Bible, may come to you. And then have courage, beloved ones. Then have courage and know that it is no longer of any consequence what the world thinks of you. For after all, they may laugh in derision, but they have not the power of Shiva. You have it. And so we say, thank you, beloved Shiva, for coming into our midst and being ever present with us. We thank you, beloved Lenalo, for being our ever present guru. And we thank you, beloved Guru Ma, for being ever present with us as well. We call to you now, beloved Father, Mother God, to continue every single day to overshadow us with thy beloved light, the beauty of thy soul in, within us, of our own mighty I am presence and beloved Holy Christ self that draws nearer unto us as we make the call and draw nearer unto our God. We are grateful and we give our all unto you, Father. In the name of the Father, and the Mother, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.